Welcome to another Bake Wrangler tutorial in Blender. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to easily bake the textures from multiple high to low poly objects at the same time. We'll start off with the same recipe we created in the quick intro video and I've added some objects to the scene so that we've got a couple more to bake. The recipe we're starting with bakes out maps for a single object to use in Unity and I'm going to modify it to bake all the objects in the scene. So first we need to adjust the inputs to include all the new objects. The easiest way to do that is to select them in the viewport and use the add selected on the node. So I'll just add um, two new objects nodes. Add all of the high polys to the source input. And the low polys to the target input. The next thing to do is add the auto sort node. And we're going to place that between the input node and the bake passes. So it starts off in pass through mode, which doesn't actually do anything to the inputs, but it can be useful if you want to group a bunch of inputs into one node. I've named my objects with a dot low and dot high suffix, so I'm going to want to set the source and target fields to use the ends with matching, and I'm going to put in the suffixes, so the targets are dot low and the sources are dot high. With the auto sort meshes node selected, we can have a look in the side panel to the right and click on this show groupings checkbox, and that will show what objects have been grouped together using the current settings. You can see that it's correctly grouped each of the low poly objects with the corresponding high poly object. However, my high poly sources in this case are actually made up of multiple objects with some decals and such. So in order to match all of them to a single target, uh, I'm going to need to place them into collections with the appropriate name. We can just name the collection the same as the object, since Blender doesn't mind if objects and collections share the same name. So I'll just go ahead and put the high poly objects into collections now. So with the collections created, I'm going to change the target input to use the collections um, instead of all these individual objects. So I'll just add them quickly here by turning on the collections mode of the object mode. It'll just show collections. I'll add those four in here. The auto sort node already has this collections option enabled. So with that option enabled, it prefers to match a collection with the corresponding name instead of a single object if it can find one. So if we look in the tool panel now, we can see that it's included all of the objects in each collection as source objects for each target. So right now all of the targets are going to end up in the same output files, but in this case the UV maps aren't set up for them to share a single file, so we need to do something to make them end up in separate files. So to do that we're going to need to add one more node, which is the file names node, and we can hook that up to the top of the output node and 
we're just going to put the output from the auto sort node into its object names input. Just set my output to bake. So now each target object will be exported to its own file set by adding the object's name to the file name. In this case, I'm happy for the maps to just be named after the object, so I'm going to leave the name field empty. Also, the object names collected from the sorting node are going to have the ID string removed from them. So in this case, the dot low is going to be removed from their name when it gets used as the file name. You can now bake out the maps for all these objects with one click, and they'll start processing in the background. There are a few warnings there about some materials that aren't in PBR format. Bake Wrangler will try to convert them to produce some sort of sensible output automatically, but it's just warning me that they, some of them may not come out how I want, so I can investigate them if there looks to be any problems in the results later. While they're baking, we're free to continue doing whatever we want in Blender, as it's all happening in the background, and any changes we might make won't affect the bake in any way. If we want, we can open up the log by clicking on the icon in the bottom right to see what's going on. Baking's finished and the icon has gone green so we know everything was successful. And here are all of the textures that it created. It's created a set for each of the objects and they're ready to use in Unity. So with that recipe set up, we can easily change any of the objects and get the maps out again whenever we need them. And if we want to get just a single one out, so we change some of the colours and just want the albedo, we can just get that with this button here next to that. So that's it for this tutorial. Happy baking!